Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman along with Ashley Mayu taking a look at the second of three graded stakes races at Santa Anita on New Year's Eve. We're going to try to beat the rain with race number three on the turf. It's the Robert J. Frankel stakes for fillies and mares at nine furlongs. Let's take a look at this field. It's a hundred grander and it's a grade three. And there are some solid horses in this race. But one that really catches the eye is the number 10 Queen Goddess. We haven't seen her since May. So she's going to have to do this fresh. She's going to have to. And she, you know, the one thing she has going for her, she's coming out of a mile and a half race back in May. We know she can go uh, a distance. I think this is a good spot for her to see her return to the races. I uh, just that one last start before the year's over. We take a look at some of the other horses near the end of the field. Quattro Ele is in good form as well. But we'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. And the good thing about Queen Goddess is her tactical speed. She's really shown big speed, you know, pace setting speed going longer distances. But she has the ability to rate. I'm not sure if Burgu Ali is going to go, but if she does, Queen Goddess will be very content to sit second. I actually thought that pace scenario too is a little a muddled. I mean, Queen Goddess, you mentioned in some of these mile and a half, mile and a quarter races, she's gone a decent clip early on and been right there kind of every step of the way. Brugu Alley, uh, not last time out, wasn't part of that pace scenario, but when you go down the page, she's been pretty close in a lot of her races at a mile or in a mile and a 16th. So I could see it um, and kind of looking at time form makes me think about it a little bit differently, but I, I think she'll be close. I'm just not sure she will be the actual pace setter. A filly that might appreciate a little bit of hitting up fronts, the number one Warren's Candy Girl. This is a filly that looked pretty good four starts back, but that was just a first level allowance race. She then won the Solana Beach, however, a nice race, four Calbreds, three starts back. This is a pretty big step up in class for her. And I just didn't think she did enough running last time out in the Crosby to make me think I want to take her even at a solid price. You know, looking at Warren's Candy Girl, I agree. I think the last two, she's tried to make up ground in those races, hasn't been able to do so. She's going to stretch out. Maybe the added ground helps her. I just think the class uh, is not going to help her in this spot. You mentioned some of the names. These are some pretty hard-knocking uh, fillies and mares, and I just think this is a deep spot. The two is bipartisanship, and she's been a little bit of an in and outer throughout her career. I liked her performance when she won the Tropical Oaks towards the end of 2021. Then she went on a little bit of a losing streak. Then she came back and she won the Crosby, beating horses like Warren's Candy Girl. I think last time out in the Matriarch, she was in too deep. Way too deep. I could not agree more. And she never really got running in that race where everyone else, Reva Glory, we know what she was able to do. Um, you know, even England's Rose ran a good race. And in this one, Cunnage, she's going to have to face England's Rose again. Uh, the win two back was decent again, though. I just wonder, this is probably the class relief that she needs. I can see her getting a piece. But what we've seen this year as a whole, um, not enough to endorse, you know, on the top spot for me. Burgu Alley, the number three, is a graded stakes winner on the turf at Santa Anita, but that race was the autumn miss restricted to three-year-olds back in 2021. While her speed puts her in good stead in this race, or her tactical speed at the very least, I wonder if she's done much improving since that start. She's winless since. She is winless since. It's been actually a rough year for her, not hitting the board in any of her five appearances. The barn, though, Phil D'Amato, we've seen it. Uh, he's done really well with his turf runners. Uh, he started off the meet pretty nicely at Santa Anita not too too long ago. I wonder in some of her races too. I mean, they, we've mentioned her tactical speed. Um, we haven't really, you know, seen her have that late kick and the stretch in any of these races. She's been forwardly placed even at a mile and an eighth, three starts back. I thought she got a good trip. They did go a little a little quick early on, and she had nothing left. So I just can't see her with her form currently sticking around for for anything really. The four new heat stretches back out to the distance of her most recent win, but she's been stuck in that second level allowance condition for a long time, and she just seems pace dependent. So she's taking a big step up in class, and we'll need a little bit of pace and race luck as well. She'll need a ton of pace. She didn't really get that last time out. It was her first start, though, in quite a while. The one thing I'll say is if you want to give her a plus, she's loved the mile and an eighth distance, the only two times she's run at it, and her best race this year was at that distance. I just think, again, a similar story we've, we've been saying the waters might be deep for her.
England's Rose, the number five, looks like a true contender in this spot. She's going to be making her third start off a pretty significant layoff. And just look at the names she's been in against in her two starts this form cycle. The recently retired Going Global was just a star in Southern California. England's Rose ran second to her in the Goldacova. And here's the matriarch where she was in against odds on Regal Glory, who's a true grade one type. And in this race, England's Rose, we pick up the replay a little bit late, was kind of down on the inside midway on the turn at a key juncture. She'll get outside late and she's really game to get up for second she was and saw the five in here kind of uh set some strong fractions early on which set up for other horses in here regal glory much the best but still a blanket finish for that second spot i think that was at a mile i do think this is a horse that's been appreciated the added distance i think in her last two she probably needed more ground in each of those upwards very consistent type still looking for that first win of 2022 but i also like her getting back to santa anita some of her best figs have been over this turf course the horse cutting back in distance is the number six, Scarabia. This is a Calumet Farm homebred. They tried blinkers last time out in the red carpet, and she was just one pace that day. That's kind of a running style, sort of a grinding sort that I think might be more effective at longer distances. She has a race or two on her page that make her somewhat com uh, competitive. I kind of like her at all on the bottom of single race exotics. I think so. I think it'd be a good spot for her. You're definitely going to get a price on her as well. And she's only had one start since joining the new barn. I remember her actually at Gulfstream Park when she broke her maiden. She ran okay after that in, in, in a grade three race. And she's just been a little hit or miss in terms of her form. Her last two, she was in graded stakes competition. The Rodeo Drive, obviously deep waters with going to Vegas, family way, horses that we would see at, at Del Mar just in the following month. I, I just don't know what to do with her. She is cutting back. But I do think if you're looking for a price horse, her numbers at her best would make her a factor. Here's a horse coming off a layoff, the number seven closing remarks for trainer Carla Gaines. We haven't seen her since May when she was fourth behind Queen Goddess in the Santa Ana. Uh, she didn't have the greatest trip that day. She's another filly, however, that seems pace dependent. She does seem pace dependent. We've never really seen her close, at least in the last probably eight or nine races to the pace. You have to go pretty down far pretty far down, excuse me, the page to find a race where she was close. I mean, I'm looking at April of 2021, but I, I thought her last two, they were good efforts. She did go from that mile to a mile and a quarter. She did have, you know, handle the added ground fine. Now she's going to kind of get that sweet spot in here. Distance, she's, she, you know, she's performed well in the past. Uh, curious to see what she'll take in terms of the tote action come Saturday. I think she's one that maybe will take a little bit of play in here. I kind of understand why D'Amato turned back the eight Island of Love to a downhill turf sprint last time out. She began her career with a couple of strong efforts overseas in Italy. I just wonder if a North American turf sprint's just a bit too sharp for Island of Love. And then if you argue that the Del Mar Oaks two starts back was just too tough of a spot, now you've got a filly that's a bit dirtied up and a race three back the San Clemente was not bad at all. She will face older horses for the first time. She will, but that race three back and even four back when she was second to Cairo Memories, who was really well respected, especially out in California with her, you know the races that she had been able to uh, kind of perform and uh, what she had been able to do. Her, her last race, I'm gonna draw a line through it. I completely agree. I don't think a six and a half sprint suited her well. Two back, I thought she had a ton of trouble. Um, she wasn't ice cold on the board. She was still a price in there, but this is gonna be interesting to see her. Uh, the barn we've talked about with other horses has just been off to a good start. Always one to watch. And she's a huge price on the morning line. The mile and an eighth is one of the major handicapping factors of this race, I think. For some, it's a little bit too short. For some, it's a little bit too long. It's just right for the nine Avenue de France, who's done excellent work at a mile and an eighth in her career. Now, she's finished behind England's Rose in her last two races, both of them at a mile, but she won the maybe three starts back. She, again, a bit of an in and outer, but when she fires her A game, she could be right there. I think so. Uh, I think that she has a huge shot in here in terms of where she could finish. I don't love her record at Santa Anita, but I do think a lot has to do with the distance. So, I mean, she's had a lot of mile races, mile and a 16th. And you mentioned those last two efforts. Um, she's been beat by, you know, some really nice horses, so a couple that she'll have to face once again. But mile and an eighth on September 10th in that grade two did suit her well. And even her prior effort when she was second to glowing global, excuse me, going global, that was a tongue twister, was a good race. And we talk about connections. Frankie DeTore was off to a great start winning three races on opening day. Uh, I think he's getting some really live mounts and she could be one of them. 
Queen Goddess, uh, one of the horses to beat despite this significant layoff for trainer Michael McCarthy. She won the American Oaks when it was off the turf, so that allays some fears if the rains come and knock this race to the main track, and she's pretty good on the turf as well. She won the Santa Ana two starts back, and last time out in the Santa Barbara, for that mile and a half distance, I thought that was a really legitimate pace, 47 and two for the half. And I realized she's the odds on favorite, but the horse that ran her down became one of the better longer distance turf mares in California, Nage Blanche. Nage Blanche has been kind of a beast, as you mentioned, in, in her career so far. And I thought this was a great performance. I mentioned, you know, the pace was hot for a mile and a half. Typically, you're seeing way softer opening halves and even three quarters. And it was still race-like for some levels. Um, I, I think the distance is going to suit her well. The layoff is a bit of a question. Michael McCarthy, though, I'm a big fan of his work and what he's able to do. I know when you look at the six-month or more layoff, he's only 13%, but um, I think he knows kind of where to put a filly like this. Drawn way on the outside is the 11, Quattroelli. And while she has to improve just a little bit, perhaps to obtain top honors, I am a fan of hers, and I think she might be lurking a bit under the radar. I really liked her second-level allowance win over course and distance, two starts back. She was at the back of a compact field, swung four wide, and got it done. And she ran okay last time out, going a little longer in the red carpet. She ran really well. I mean, she was struck too, and we're going to watch the, the replay here in the red carpet. You can see her. She's in second at this point, and the, the five's still on the lead in here, but she's going to keep on grinding away. This is a distance that she had never gone uh, much further. You know, it's an extra quarter of a mile than she had seen last time out, and I still thought it was a good effort. You mentioned the win two back, probably the one to key in on, but she still tried to help hold her own there. Turning back in distance, I think, will help her. Let's see if she could work out a trip from the far wide post position. Top pick time for the grade three Robert J. Frankel. It's the second of the three graded stakes on the card. We're in agreement. I was blown away with what I saw from Queen Goddess earlier in 2022. She'll have to overcome the layoff. I just think this is a good spot. She found a nice spot class-wise. I think so, too. I think the distance is right. We know that she can go further than this distance that she'll be at. Uh, even her mile and a half race was strong. And I just have to think her tactical early foot puts her in a good spot early on where when we went down the page, there are a lot of horses in here that have too much work to do. So if she's not even necessarily on the lead, but she's in that you know top two or three runners, I think she's going to be in the perfect spot. 10, 5, 11, 9 for Ashley. I'm going to try to get the 8 Island of Love into the number 10, 8, 5, 7 for me. In the grade 3, Robert J. Frankel, it's race number 3 at Santa Anita on New Year's Eve. Good luck.